I want to go ahead and share a story with all of y'all out there um, about something that happened to me a long time ago. And um, hopefully y'all are able to get the same message that I'm trying to drive home through this um, once you hear my story. Back up in New York City, I was the victim of a rape. I left the bar on the Upper East Side at, um, I would say, about 1 a.m. in the morning. And I took a train. You know, presumably, um, I was thinking it was one of the trains that would lead me straight back to Jamaica, New York. So, I inadvertently get on one of, um, I'm thinking, either the blue or the red lines. I'm not really sure. And at that time, in my drunken stupor, you know, I wasn't, you know, fully conscious. As a matter of fact, I kept going in and out of sleep. And, um, you know, at one point I woke up and I found out that I was in an area that first startled me because at the time I thought that I wasn't familiar with it, but turns out it was um, right next to it. it was adjacent to Yankee Stadium. So after exiting and then entering um, back through the um, turnstiles to get back on the train, you know, I was sincerely lost at that point and I was tired, I was groggy, and I just, I just desperately wanted to go home. And that's all I had on my mind was to go to home, was to go home get in the bed and go to sleep. So I did as I've always done in past prior situations like that and as I still do now, you know, I decided to reach out and ask a stranger, somebody I don't know, for help. And that's not a crime. You know, it's not a crime to ask somebody when you're honestly and sincerely lost for help. You know? It's a human need, it's a human right. So I reached out and I asked this motherfucker for help. It was, he was, it, since what he did to me was just beyond the human. <laughs> what this, what, what it did, I'm going to call him an it, what this thing did to me. Um, he was Mexican. I would say, I think, maybe a little bit taller than me. And he, um, you know, he was bald headed. And I, I reached out to him for help and I told him, hey, I'm lost. You know, I need help. Can you help me get back to where I need to be? You know, guide me in the right direction. So, of course, he says, oh, sure. So I remember at one point, everything's just, you know, a blur from that time, from that night. But I do remember significant details, significant, more significant ones. I remember being on a platform that was high atop. And I recall, you know, wondering, you know, I, I don't know if I was out in Flushing, Queens, maybe. You know, not even cognizant, I, I, you know, it was to the length of the journey. I don't recall all of that. But... I remember um, asking him, you know, where are we, um, what's, you know, so at one point he wants to get a bite to eat. So we exit the turnstile, we exit the platform, leave from it, and we go into a store, you know, one of those little 24 hour, you know, convenience stores that's open up in New York City all night, and we go in there to get ourselves a quick bite to eat. So he buys me something, he buys something for himself, and then he buys me something. And then at one point he asked me, he offers to, I'm guessing, quote unquote, exchange numbers. You know, not understanding. I, I guess, you know, in my drunken stupor, because, you know, I was drunk and also because, you know, my mental cognizance wasn't all together there, you know, and I was also thinking to myself, too, I, you know, gee, I don't want to piss this person off, you know, who's leading me and who's helping me out from, so, from what I thought, you know, was helping me out at the time. I say, sure, and I take his number. I don't think I gave him my number, though, but I did take his number. I do remember that for sure. And so, um, I recall, um, like I said, everything just happened so fast. I recall him, um, he, he decides to go um, 
through somewhere, somewhere that was very unfamiliar to me. Um, it was a bunch of buildings and stuff, a bunch of big um, brick buildings, high rises like you conventionally see in New York, and I didn't know where we were at the time. So I asked him, you know, where are you leading me to? You know, where am I going? And he just said, oh, you know, I'm trying to find a shortcut. And even in my drunken stupor, you know, I realized that, you know, hey, something's amiss here, something's not right. So at one point, I saw him go into the alley, and I recall him pulling down his pants. And I thought maybe it was the piss or something or whatever, so I decided to walk out um, of the alley and give him some privacy. All of a sudden, from out of nowhere, I feel something go like this. Like somebody just snatched me and C-clamped me from behind and just, I mean, knocked the life, knocked the spirit out of me. And I didn't know what the hell what the fuck was going on at the time. You know, I was just, I was really confused. You know, I remember I was in a state of days where I was wondering and I was even asking him, what are you doing? What, what's going on here? Why did you just do that? You know, what the fuck did I do to you? You know, what, what are you trying to do to me? And, you know, he just kept choking me from behind. And, um, so, and, you know, I, I he, at one point, he kept saying to me, you know, just have sex with me. Please just have sex with me. Just just have sex with me. And I'll never forget those words, just have sex. Like, it's just so simple for me to just give up my body to you without my consent and against my will. Like, I'm just going to open myself to anybody who wants to know you don't have that fucking right. So I was worried about getting raped. You know, fuck dying. And as I always say, you know, you're going to have to rape my dead body before you rape me. So I tried to fight the bastard off. And despite my drunken stupor, as hard as I tried, you know, I kept, you know, he had that C-clamp on me. And he kept, I'll never forget these words, he kept begging me the whole time, just have sex with me, just have sex with me, just have sex with me. Like, it's just so fucking simple to just get, like, I'm not even a person. Like, I'm just a thing. Like, my my whole life being as because I'm a female, because I'm a woman, is just to give up my private parts, to give up myself to anybody and anybody who just fucking wants it. Like, oh yes, I'm you know, like, yes, just just take it. You know, I'm not I'm not a person. Just just enter into me. No, I, I have a lot more self respect and self pride than that. More than that. So I tried hard, despite my lack of coordination, I tried hard. And at one point I pulled out the pepper spray that my dad gave me. And I tried to spray the motherfucker with it. But he was able to overpower me again and knock it out of my hands because of my lack of coordination. And, you know, I remember going in and out of consciousness. I mean, the whole thing was just, you know, it was almost like a blur. You know, just so much happening, so much happening, so much going on at the same time. And, you know, it was just, you know, you're not aware. It's, it's just a blur. It's like a blur. You know, except the struggling and that those comments. I, I'll never forget those comments. Just have sex with me. Like, you know, I'm just supposed to avail anybody of my body. Fuck you. So I felt... So I fought, and, you know, and I remember blacking out, and, you know, I don't know what happened from there, but I remember waking up, and then at one point I tried to climb the stairs to get away from the son of a bitch. I remember he grabs me from behind, and then, you know, I, I spin around like this, and I'm on my back, and I remember he started punching me perpetually in the face. And I, you know, I just kept thinking, you know, about my dad's pepper spray, and, you know, to me, it was like my dad was there. You know, my taekwondo, none of that could have worked because, you know, my coordination was just out. And I remember this sick fuck son of a bitch, you know, kept punching me in the fucking face. You know, he kept punching me in the fucking face, and he kept telling me, you know, if you tell somebody, I'm going to kill you. And this, this went on for a while, and my, my fucking, my face was just like, I mean, bloody, bruised, and fucking battered, all right? It was just, it was gone. So, at one point, a stranger came into the alley, didn't do shit, and when he saw everything that was going off, the motherfucker just walked off. Didn't offer me assistance, didn't offer me any help, anything. So, what happened was, was that, 
when dawn came, I was, you know, I woke up from my unconscious state. You know, I'm sleepy, you know, unconscious. But in a situation like that, you can't help but be unconscious. I woke up. I pretty much crawled from out the alley and I tried my best to get on my legs and I start shouting out, you know, to any car passing by, anybody passing by, anybody, you know, so anybody in the buildings can fucking hear me. Please help me. Please help me. And I remember, you know, a good Samaritan couple in the form of a Jamaican couple rolled up and the Jamaican girlfriend um, kept saying, you know, she needs help, she needs help, she needs help. And the Jamaican fellow, you know, started the bullshit interrogation, you know, well, what are you doing here? And I just wanted to say to him, well, I'm sorry.